back to my channel got a whole bunch of stuff going on here real quick and I just wanted to do something real fast video to kind of let you know I've been really busy and I apologize I've tried to get some questions answered I've tried to get some other stuff filmed this tadpole build has been an absolute nightmare so I'm probably going to scrap that build and then do the uh, other build so I'm kind of going through real quick some things that I've been messing with I have spent a lot of time um, recently kind of educate myself to understand how to use the Tango 2 and Crossfire stuff. So I've kind of put some other things on hold. I have been working with this transmitter, trying to get everything. Let me show you. I've been trying to get everything kind of set up on this and get all my models transferred over, bind them up, fly them. I've gotten maybe three packs on one quad, two packs on another quad, and five packs on another quad. So I really haven't gotten much flight time in on this thing. But this transmitter has really been a lot of fun to work with. I've enjoyed it. I'm still trying to get used to this extra button over here. I keep wanting to double tap on the page button because I came from my QX7 and I've worked with the T16 so much. So this is definitely something to get used to. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you real quick that there's things that are going to come on the channel about this transmitter. I'm probably not going to do like a, you know, a review of it. I just want to let you know. So far, um, I'm a fan. This thing is really, really fun to work with. And I'll be honest with you, I think the gimbals are actually better than the, the Hall gimbals that I put in my QX7. Um, obviously, they're newer, so they're going to be more accurate. But I just feel like the the throw in it, it seems like they do feel different. Um, so, and trying to get used to the extra switches too. I would imagine if you come from the Q uh, or from the uh, Tranus X9, you, you'd probably slide right into this. But yeah, probably have some stuff here on the channel about this. So much fun to, to mess with all the, the gadgetry. So very cool, have some stuff on the channel about that. And then I have some Crossfire stuff to put in it. I have not set anything up yet with this. I'll be honest with you, I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, learning about the Tango 2 and how that stuff functions and helping out some buddies of mine. So uh, I'm gonna start learning a little bit more about this. I wasn't real anxious to figure this out, obviously, because they own Tango 2s and and that was the important thing to figure out for them. Uh, but there's a lot of information. This has been out for a while. So, But I have the Nano. So the Crossfire Nano RX. This came in a bundle for $119. It's actually pretty, pretty uh, significant savings to get it in a bundle. You get this and you get three Nanos. And I've seen the Nanos in action. And I'm actually pretty surprised. Uh... My buddy flew his Cinewoop really far away. Okay, we'll just say that. Really far away. Still within line of sight. So, that's coming. Some information about that, I'm sure, soon. Update. The Mobula Pick. This, this dude is... I'll be honest with you. I really thought this was going to be kind of just a funny little novelty thing. Because... This, this is something that I built quite quite some time ago, okay? And this thing has all the bells and whistles, okay? I'm trying to remember which which one of these flight controllers I... So this is, yeah, this is the SP Racing. Um, in here is the Realtek. So this is the flight controller. It's a Realtek brushed F3. Yeah, this is so the anyway, F3. Before I go too far with that... This is my little brushed uh, quad that was that that was really fun that I hardly fly anymore. So I kind of built a an updated version of it, if you will. So the antenna modifications that I've done on this have have I would definitely say yes. 
I can get five times the range from my uh, stock Mobula. Now this might look kind of silly because you know this sticks up so far and it does when you do like snap rolls it does give you a little bit of bobble because this you know is so far from the point of center of gravity. However the range is absolutely unbelievable. Like you'd fly your whoop out a fifth of the distance that this can go. I've taken the uh, my original antenna that I did for the video. I took it off. And I put the stock antenna back on. And no, nowhere near the range. So the antenna mod was definitely worth it. And then I found a thicker. This is actually uh, from an RXSR. It's actually a thicker more heavy duty antenna than what I had originally used, which is an aftermarket antenna. And I trimmed the RXSR sheathing down to the correct length for the 2.4 gigahertz. And then also I stuck it up out of the canopy just a little bit more. So it's almost at the height of the VTX antenna. So it the range is very good. So no more telemetry lost, telemetry lost when you're only like you know, 30 yards away. So pretty cool little thing to fly around, having fun with that. Um, the Tadpole. Oh man, you want to talk about misery. This Tadpole build has been an absolute nightmare because of this flywoo stack. The, the ESC, as far as I could tell, seems to be okay. I'm not having issues with it. It took new firmware um, with no problems. I didn't have any issues. I've already flown this a couple of times and actually just out of uh, frustration, I just punched out, you know, held the throttle on and it, almost to five seconds. So these are 1206 nano iFlight motors. And if you, if you have some of these, you know, they are amp hungry. I mean, they are battery eaters that esc held up no problem haven't had any issues there the flight controller and the vtx is a, is a nightmare the flight controller unflyable out of the box i won't recommend it vtx gets too hot i'm not able to do i'm not able to uh fly it out of the box I, and the second one they sent same issues uh frustrated so you know what mama says However, with that aside, finally getting it to go up in the air, I still cannot get peripherals to work. I have tried everything to get telemetry to work. I've tried everything to get uh, the smart audio on the VTX to work. I've tried to get my channel set up. It, it won't. I, you can push on that button all you want, and it's just a nightmare. So I've gotten it to work enough to fly it, and it is a lot of fun to fly. So... Just the uh, weight, the size, the frame, the the motors, the, just the combination. I got seven minutes of just flowing around, doing a little bit of acro. Nothing real, you know, nothing crazy like this guy. But uh, some fun. Now here's the thing. I, I've, I've, I'm so angry with the build video on this that I think I'm going to scrap what I have and move on. Because I don't think it's going to be a comprehensive build video. And, it, and plus it's like on and on. I've got like an hour's worth of uh, filming here. Sorry, sorry about that. My video just uh, bleeped out for a second. Um, I have the, just the amount of filming that I've done, editing that I've had to do, and it's just an uh, absolute nightmare. And I'll be honest with you, it's not been fun for me, so it's gone. Um, I have a gank frame. This is a gank uh, Nemesis 3-inch frame. I've already done a uh, unbagging, if you will, and kind of looking at camera fit, fitting in it and, and all that. I'm going to build this up. I think I'm excited about it. I may end up uh, pulling that, uh, pulling the guts out of here and putting it in here. I'm not sure if I'll get something different because I just totally can't recommend Flywoo 16 by 16 anything at this point. But I think I'm going to build this frame up and do a build video on on the channel for this so that should be interesting but i just wanted to show you this this is this is quite a fun little ripper and i know gep rc 
uh, has some 16 by 16 stuff. Mamba, I think, now has some 16 by 16 stuff. Uh, very, very cool uh, size. Here's an old school. Moving on. Here's some old school uh, quadcopter that I've, I've taken the guts out of. And then I put these Tachyon uh, 1408, 4300 kV motors on. So these motors are a little more amp hungry. They're, they're a little bit more, they're not as efficient. Do I feel like they're more aggressive and, and gnarly than the uh, 1408 Mamba motors, 4000 kV, that I really, really enjoy? Uh, I would say I would definitely go with the Mamba motors. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mama Motors win every time over over this. However, by building two identical three inches of my most favorite three inch quad, this is the Diatone Eshin ER349 converted into this frame, and I really like this frame. I know it's heavy. Let me get a weight for you, because you're probably looking at it like, oh man, that thing must weigh a ton. Sure does. 176 grams with the uh, 650 milliamp uh, hour battery on it, the tattoo, it comes up just shy of 250 grams. But I'm going to tell you what, you goose this thing over a tree and the float time is just, it's five inch or quality. I mean, it really has a lot of <laughs> just flow. A lot of air time anyway so i got two of them that i've uh i've been able to work with and this one's been a lot of fun too so we might see more of that on the channel and then this is like an old i don't know this is my old quadcopter that i really enjoyed flying it was great um i think i've just outgrown it kind of want a little more aggressiveness and and just a little nastier quadcopter uh for a three inch a heavier three inch quad so i'm going to convert this into another one of uh, let me get this frame on here so i'll have these two and then i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one so i'm gonna pull these motors off these are the gep rc 1206 um these are 4s motors 4,500 kV, but I feel like they would be really efficient on this nano build. So I'm going to take these motors off. I'm going to put Mamba 1408s on it and fly it that way. So this, this frame should be really interesting. And then I, I am not a salesman by any means, but I'm going to tell you right now for $20, this multimeter is something else. Okay. Now just just let me, I mean, obviously we have continuity check, okay, which is so important. I've stressed it a million times on my channel to, to make sure that you do a continuity check on your, see a capacitor's charged up, no beeping, because if you hear, if you hear that, you know, you got a problem. Do not put a lipo to this quadcopter. And then you can also go check around on your flight controller to make sure that you know, you have ground or 5 volt or 9 volt or 12 volt or whatever the case may be. Uh, so the voltage on this seems to be pretty accurate. I have a, uh, a bench, a 5 volt supply bench uh, that I put to it and it was pretty accurate. I think it was off by point, I think it was point zero three. So pretty accurate. And then here's the thing that really surprised me, okay? These cheap multimeters never, I mean, never can, can do capacitance correctly. They always fail. This capacitor is, is money. I'm a, this thing is literally right on the money. 33 microfarad capacitor, okay? This isn't for quadcopters. This is for something else I'm working on. But I just wanted to show you. I know that this one is, is a super accurate capacitor. So I'm going to just charge it up. Let that come up, and it's a big capacitor, so let that come up. 33. Are you kidding me? A $20 multimeter off Amazon. 33, and I know that's I, that's right on the money. So this thing blows me away. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to recommend it. It's cool. 
uh, hold it on on there and you can you get a light and it lasts a, a fair amount of time it does up to 10 amps I, I can't tell you whether or not that's any good because I haven't used it yet because I actually have a 20 amp that I use for the quadcopters um, but yeah you just you just switch that over here and then come over here to amps and you got DC click down AC so if you run your amp amp draw on that so you can measure you know how many amps the quad I have a 20 amp so I don't I don't I haven't used it yet so but I tell you what for for a twenty dollar multimeter on Amazon <laughs> you can't beat it all right lastly let me get this pile out of the way here the five inch my my grass covered five inch and my beater I just I love the beat on this thing this thing can take so much abuse uh, thumbs up uh, to the to the source one v3 frame I, I thought you know it was gonna be I thought I was gonna be disappointed because of the weight and it's just so heavy and it's not gonna be efficient I'm not gonna get the flight time I want but I tell you what when you're looking at a hole in a tree and you're like I don't know I don't know if I want to risk it. You, you're doing it. With this frame, it, it really, I mean, other than props and maybe hurting a motor, this frame really covers all the components pretty good. And I'm starting to rethink my my idea of, of, of components being covered, okay? But I do have, before I ramble on too far, because this thing's just really fun to beat on, you know? This uh, DVR, the Runcam Nano board, Every stitch of video that I have on my channel is from Fat Shark DVR. So it's gone through the camera, it's gone through the OSD on the flight controller, it's going into the VTX, out the antenna, in the antenna, the goggles, and through that garbage DVR uh, from the Fat Shark. That's it. Everything on my channel is through that uh, system. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. I, I would like to get some footage for you today. I know that there's only like a couple of you that were wanting to see me fly, and I'm going to make that happen. This uh, should give you a better experience than Fat Shark DVR. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a lot of rain, and I have just been swamped busy uh, with other stuff. So I'm going to try to get that done. I just want to do a real quick video of some of the things going on because I feel like it's kind of a mess. I'm not able to get content out in a timely manner because I want to. I want to get uh, some more videos out and I want to film and edit and all that stuff. But I've just been so busy kind of getting some of these other uh, things laying around, buttoned up and kind of learning more about stuff. You know, it takes a while to learn stuff because, you, you know, you want to review it or you want to show it off and, and this and that. But if you don't know what you're talking about, I don't know. It's just... And that doesn't make much sense to me. So I just want to do a real quick uh, video of, of some of the cool things and then update on some of the other things I've been working on. I'd like to get more information on this 5-incher. Um, you know, as far as putting something like this together, because this is absolutely a dream to fly. I mean, it, the video is so good. I have a video on on how I cleaned up the video on this. But hey, I appreciate your time. Thanks for checking out my channel and subscribing. Uh, if this video, if you liked it, hey, you know, give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe. <laughs> Man, if you hated it, you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.